Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength. That I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Tonight, the course of your life is going to change. In the name of Jesus. Somebody raise your hands, let's worship God.
one more time and tell him to give you all the glory. Even to that man, but of course, the purpose that they must walk with. In Jesus' name, and those things said, you may be sitting. When I was told about what the conference is about, women, and then I heard the theme, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. I asked God, what is the spirit of this conference? Why this thing? Why this part of the scripture? Why? And um, I got the answer. Proverbs 31 is written by a man of wisdom. But it was not the revelation of that man of wisdom. I don't know that making sense. Proverbs 31 was written by a man of wisdom. But it was not out of the revelation of that man. It was after the revelation of another. There are two kinds of knowledge in the kind of how it functions. There is a knowledge that is begotten in a man's spirit by reason of his nature. Or even the knowledge that comes or is in any living creature because of its nature. Nobody teaches a mother hen to hatch eggs. 
Sihine omuntar kushome senko ko kubumbatira amahurugayo that is not taught echo tubakutegesa it is in the natural system of a hen shiri ombahangwa bwenko ko even if she has never seen another do it no biya kubetaka reba ga endisho kwake urukurara mahuri the moment she lays eggs she will sit on them enko ko ke kumara kutera mahurugayo egarara and when you mess with them and she senses it she knows that is divine you understand what i'm saying there are many things in the living creatures that are because of their nature that illumination comes in their spirit to do the things that take the course of their nature and there are many things that respond to you because of your nature as a woman your body knows when to drop the egg nobody told it it knows I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Now, but there are also things, there's knowledge that is taught. You understand what I'm saying? And it is received from another and transferred. Proverbs 31 has three parts. It has the part of one which possesses knowledge <inaudible> and revelation. <inaudible> it has the part to whom it is passed on. <inaudible> and the part to who learns <inaudible> from the one to whom it was passed on. <inaudible> and from the person who passed. <inaudible> You're the fourth factor in this equation. You're reading the story of a man who learned from the one who was revealed to the one who was revealed to. You get my point? But in there, there is a fifth individual. What I, call, what I want to call the fifth factor. That's the one I came to talk to. <laughs> you will understand. Proverbs 31 verse 1. The Bible says, the of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother told him. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. This is the man, the man of wisdom, the man who wrote Proverbs is saying. I want to give you the the words of King Lemuel of the prophecy that his mother told him so the mother of Lemuel sat Lemuel down and told Lemuel and Lemuel spoke what and the man of wisdom picked that wisdom which is taught to you I think the three Lemuel's mother taught Lemuel. Lemuel Lemuel spoke words and those words the man of wisdom picked them and wrote them in Proverbs 31 for you the fourth factor to read you get my point? For you the fourth part to read. It has gone through three different stages. To get to you. Where is the fourth? I don't know whether I'm making sense. I'm going to go a bit deeper here. This is not the wisdom that Solomon received about women. This is wisdom that a woman knew about women. Even me, I can only speak according to the wisdom of that woman. I can't go further than her wisdom. Everything we are quoting, that woman called it. 
and it became. You understand what I'm saying? And it was recorded in the heart of Lemuel. This happens to be the mother-in-law of Lemuel, Lemuel's wife. Let me also make a statement before I go deeper. If you're married, why was she really? And you're not in terms with your, the mother of your husband. I don't care how wicked she is. Fix it. Let's not even debate about it. This is ancient wisdom. It's older than you. You should not have entered marriage if you didn't know. If you're not in terms with the mother of your husband, I don't care how wicked she is. Fix it. I don't care if she doesn't want to talk to you. Talk to her. I don't care whether she speaks if about you. Bless her. I don't care whether she's a very rebellious woman. And she wishes that you and her son don't become. Fix it. Praise the Lord Jesus. I said fix it. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? Do what? Fix it. Now, let me get into the eyes of the mother of Lemuel. It was her who said that is Virtuous woman is hard to find. He said it's hard to find. This is a mother who carried her son for months. She loves him to death. You know the love a mother has for their child. And Lemuel has grown up to a place of maturity. To assume the responsibility of being a husband. But above all, he's not a husband. He's a king. Are you hearing me? So this is a queen. The mother. She's a queen. Are you hearing me? So she's not just looking at her husband finding a wife. She's looking at the prosperity of a kingdom. The preservation of God's of their people. And she realizes that if my son makes a mistake in marrying the wrong woman, the testimony of the kingdom is gone. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. That is how powerful women are. You understand what I'm saying? It does not matter how powerful the king is. If he gets a funny woman, the kingdom is in trouble. Because of the anointing that multiplies through. By reason of the office. Praise God. So, are we together? This is a queen. Lemuel's mother. She has been a wife to a king. And a kingdom has been preserved. To the extent where Lemuel now must become king. And she looked at her part in the kingdom. The thing that preserved the kingdom. And she calls Lemuel on the side. And then she feels the agony of her mother. The challenges of that time that a virtuous woman 
is hard to find. Many people think they are. Some assume they are. Some put on t-shirts. That's a woman. You understand what I'm saying? Some speaking and they say it. Even when we tell you you are. Many of you don't know what it is. That is why she tells the guy it is hard to find a woman who is virtuous. It is hard to find a good woman. Gentlemen here, it is hard. It is simple. No. This is truth. It is older than you. It is hard to find a good woman. Do you understand what I'm saying? This goes beyond debate. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not even something we are going to negotiate over. If you don't understand it, either you're not yet married, or you've not yet understood marriage. This is not a man saying that it is fine to have to find a good wife. No. This is a woman speaking to her son. So it's not even about my opinion. This is a mother to her son telling her a virtuous woman is hard to find. Praise God. It's hard. Praise the Lord. Now I'm going to go a bit deeper. Lemuel is king. Lemuel, no Some of you know the story of Zaxis, I think. I think I should say. He marries a woman called Vashti. Some of you remember the story. And he calls Vashti to, to, to make her a spectacle. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he, now, understand this. He wanted to show her beauty. You get my point? Of course, somebody will ask, why? Because women thrive with words. They thrive with words. Men are practical. When you saw a mobile phone, he wants to first see it to know it's a mobile. But you can define a mobile phone to a woman and she understands it and believes it's a mobile phone. A research was done recently in Commonwealth schools. Research from Commonwealth schools. And they realized that there was a point where the male, the, the male, uh, the, the male, the young boys in school were failing to perform like the girls in school. In the Commonwealth schools. Of the world. I happened to meet the two best Commonwealth teachers in the world. They teach in a, in a small village in Malaysia called Bakelalan. And they discovered that the boys were not performing well like the girls. Because women, the way they are wired, they can understand with words. Men don't understand with words. Men don't understand with words. You get my point? Eh? When you tell a man this is a hanky, he has to touch it, feel it, know its texture, and know it's a hanky. You can show a woman that this is a hanky. And her eyes are enough to know. She doesn't need to touch it. Men don't think that way. This is an established research fact. So they introduced 
practical senses of teaching. And they realized that when the practical sense came, boys started improving. And they realized girls stayed at the same place. They just kept going as they were supposed to. Because for them practical and, and abstract are the same. What defines them is what? You understand what I'm saying? Every man must know how to talk to his wife. And every woman must learn to receive praises. That, that, that cuts the cross. Joshua tells you a bit of telling me, yeah, yeah, you're right. You understand? Don't say, no, 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 don't say don't say no, don't say no. Praise God. That is how it's supposed to be. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so, of course, this is a fact. The same it is now. Even in this instance. That Queen Vashti was brought out to show her, the people, the princess, his beauty. He just wanted to say, look at the most beautiful woman in the whole world. Look at how you know, he was wanted to affirm her. To affirm her. That's the Ephesians. That Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. That's how men are supposed to be. Not because you're supposed to evoke the beauty of your wife. She can be a beautiful woman but not a beautiful wife. That's why on the marriage day and she's going to become a wife. It doesn't matter how beautiful she is as a woman. The day she walks on that aisle for confession. You understand? She's veiled. In other words, we are not looking at your beauty as a woman. We are unveiling a wife. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is the essence of the veil. To separate the woman from the wife. I don't know whether I'm preaching to somebody. So, your words evoke her beauty. That's why that man makes confession. I take you to be my lawfully and beloved. Da, 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 da. All, all of that is evocation. There is no ugly wife. There are ugly women, but there is no ugly wife. Uh, let's speak like normal people. When you are growing up, and there are neighbors you used to look at and say, I hear this man. Look at the woman. When we were growing up, you'd look at a woman and say, Eh! The man is hard. The woman is. But the wife. Did you get my point? Eh? So that is why some people find it so hard to reconcile. Between who we date and who we marry. I have that you show up dating another Praise God. Come and see him. Now deeper. They tell, was it the king? 
he, br- he tells her, bring her for beauty. She refused to come to the king's command. And the Bible says the king was wroth. He was angry. Why did she refuse to come? And the Bible says, and he called for all his wise men. Which knew the times. For was the king's man at one all that knew the law and judgment. And so, there was Cassian, all his men, they are there. The and seven priests of Paza, which saw the king's face, it is he. And the next verse says, give me the message version of that, the next verse, that verse, 15. He asked them what legal recourse they had against Queen Vashti for not obeying king's access. King King Asaxes summoned delivered by the eunuchs. Next verse says, The man called Memukan spoke up in the council of the king. And And he said, It is not only the king Queen Vashti has insulted. It's all of us. Look at her power. When you get into a kingly setting, in a royalty class, whatever you do to your husband, you do to every man. And the next verse says, the leaders and the people in every last one of kings that access his province. And the next verse says, the word is going to get out. Did you hear the latest about Queen Vashti? King, King Success ordered her to be brought before him and she wouldn't do it. And it says, when the women hear it, when the women, other women hear it, start treating their husbands with content. That means there was a demon spirit that that vast released on every woman in that kingdom. God cut her off immediately. Because there was a price of losing one woman and preserving a destiny of a kingdom. And God chose to preserve a kingdom over the indifference of one woman. That's why Esther exists. You didn't get what I just said. You didn't get what I just said. She knew what to do, when to do it, how to do it, whatever way to do it. The act of one woman can defile a whole nation. One woman in scripture is pregnant and God tells her two nations war in you. Two nations. When they were in the man, they were not nations. It was simply seed. When it entered the woman, it became a nation. You understand what I'm saying? So it's telling that two nations were in you. A man can carry you the seed. But nations are raised by women. And God looks at Vashti. And he knows if this continues, the testimony of this kingdom is gone as we know it. And God cut her off. God cut her off. God cut her off. Lemuel's mother knew things. She was not a foolish woman. She said a virtuous woman is hard to fight. Are you hearing me? She said a virtuous woman is hard. She warned the man, it's not for kings to take wine. Don't ever take wine. Don't do this. But when it comes to a woman, it is hard. She's advising her son. Stop, 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 stop,
She starts designing the virtuous woman. Praise the Lord. Now here is the interesting part. I see her standing before her son. Praise the Lord Jesus. And she's defining the virtuous woman. From verse 10. Now, we are going to read just the simplest lines. I want to show you a revelation here. 11. The heart of her husband. 12. She will do him good. 13. She seeketh. Wool. 14. She is like the merchants. 15. She rises up. 16. She considers a field. 17. She gathers her loins. 18. She perceives her merchandise. 19. She lays her hands. 20. She stretches out. 21, she is not afraid. 22, she maketh herself. 23, her husband. He's talking about, Lemuel's mother is talking about who a virtuous woman is. 24, she maketh linen. 25, strengthen on her half clothing. 26, she opens her mouth with wisdom. 27, she looks well to the ways of her household. 28, her children. And the Bible says, listen to this language. She's talking to the son. Many daughters have done virtuously, but, but you excel them. You, you don't get it. <laughs> you have you got in it? They are describing a virtuous woman. Okay, I need a man here. Just one guy. This is Lenuel's mother. You're facing me. He's telling you about a virtuous woman. She does this. She does this. Her children are this. Her children are this. And then she does this. And then she does this. And Lemuel is listening. Saying, oh, okay. Then she does this. Lemuel is saying, mm, oh, okay. And then she does this. And then he's facing her, her son. Her son. And she's telling him, many daughters have done virtuous. But thou excel them. You didn't get it. That means when she was talking to Lemuel, she was instructing his wife. You didn't get it. When she was talking to Lemuel, she was instructing his wife. Don't you know that when he made Adam, he went inside Adam. He didn't go outside of Adam. Because he knows she must come back from within. He entered Adam. The Bible says he put him in a deep sleep. And out of him called a rib. And out of his rib formed a woman. And the moment he saw her, while his flesh was closed, he says she shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of man. He calls her bone of my bone. And flesh of my flesh. He did not call her bone in my bones. He did not call her bone in my bones. He called her bone of my bones. That means when you describe my bones, she is the bone. She is the bone of my bones. Hey, that is why for Adam it wasn't a helper. Uh -uh. The Bible says his son man was alone. And he says, I shall make him a helper meet for him. Not a helper. 
a helper suitable and the, the literal translation of the Hebrew is a helper of his own kind that means your, your, your husband you, you are the man you marry you don't get it that is why I tell women draw your value when you're getting married draw your value when you're getting married the man, you, are the, you are the man you marry that man is you, you are the man you, you're the bone of this bone if it's rebellious check yourself if it's quarrelsome, check yourself. If it's hot tempered, check yourself. If it does not have a vision, check yourself. If it produces stupid children, check yourself. That is why the Bible says that a foolish child is shame to the mother. Helper, I'm a minister of the Holy Ghost. I have the Holy Spirit. He is my helper. If he does not move, it's his fault because he called me. If the Holy Spirit doesn't move, if the Holy Spirit doesn't move, yet I'm a minister of the gospel. Why did he call me? If he wasn't willing to move. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is his responsibility to help me. Listen. Do you know how painful it is for me to imagine that God made a helper for me? Meaning I'm not complete. I can't help myself. He said it. It is not good for man to be a... It is not good. It is not good. It is not good. It is not good. Now, who is more responsible here? You are responsible. Because you are the helper. That is why the Bible says women must adapt to their husband. They must adapt. And I told my own, never marry someone when you look at him, you don't see yourself in him. Go beyond Go beyond money. Go beyond looks. But when you look at him and you don't see yourself, Inside him. Don't waste your time. That marriage will not work. Am I communicating to somebody? Likewise, men. When you look at a woman, do you see her in you? No, listen. For example, why does the Bible say she shall do him good? All the days of his life. When you have a, a body part, a body part can't work against a person. Your heart pumps to give you blood and oxygen. Your brain pumps to work for you. Your, your kidneys work for you. Your everything works for you. A, a kidney can't turn against a man. When you fall sick, it's not your kidney turning against you. It is an external something trying to corrupt your kidney to fight you. But it was not made to fight you. I don't care how wicked your husband is. You can never fight the one you come out of. If you're fighting him, there's a possibility you never come out of him. 
die. A kidney fighting its owner is saying it wants to die. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. You know, we also must bring sanity in the church. Television has spoiled marriage. English people partly have also spoiled marriage. Even Africans now, they are also like white people. They enter marriage, they come out. Tomorrow they eat it, they don't want it. They take marriage so like... They fall in love like that, they get chucked like that, then they enter another relationship like... For like oh, you anyhow you want, you're just there. Tell the neighbor the one they are talking about didn't come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So she's talking to Lemuel. But instructing the wife. Because she knows if she speaks to Lemuel, the woman inside will hear. <laughs> Woo, did you just get what I just said? That is why it begins with an instructed man. I wish you understand what I'm saying. He must know. You know there are men who don't even know their wives are virtuous. Because their mothers didn't teach them how. Do you know that partly the biggest percentage of white marriages are failing? Men never see the beauty in their wives. No, my nature gets hung up when some share and hoofa. It's not that they don't try. It's just that their mothers didn't teach them what a good woman is. So they go exploiting every woman to find the good definition they think they have because they didn't have a mother. Me, women, do your job. That is why no wise woman. No wise woman. No wise woman can have a son failing in marriage. You have not understood. No wise woman can have a failing son in marriage. If you're wise, your son will not fail in marriage. Because you will instruct his wife through him. He is the head. He is the head. So Lemuel's mother is speaking. Only to the point where she gets to a point, a particular point. After speaking everything about a woman is, she realizes he's, she's inside him. Then she said, you excel them. You. You, you, you excel them. Lemuel walked back with the, man, with the wisdom. And one time he's speaking. The words his mother told him. And the man of wisdom Solomon. Picks it. It's not everything spoken. It's the fact that at the realization of the total sum of this woman described, she gets the ultimate revelation. She's in inside him. She's inside Lemuel. She's inside Lemuel. She's not outside him. She's inside him. Because I begot him. I begat him. Do you understand what I'm saying? When this woman comes out, it is not what they teach her to be. It is the thing she was instructed when within. <laughs> it is not, please do this. Please don't do this. Now when you do this, your husband will become annoyed. When you don't do this, your husband will No, it goes beyond what they teach you. 
in a single class no it is the things that are inside you while you are still within that is why we become born again that you take on a certain nature when you became born again you became incorruptible the Bible says you have been begotten of the incorruptible seed which is the word of God that liveth and walketh forever that is the confidence that we have to tell you that you are among them if you don't take it, it's up to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because when you are in the making, when you are in the making, it begins from within. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why counseling people who are getting married, it has to become a bit better. You know, Mr. 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 When you look at this man, do you feel that you're the queen of a king who's building a kingdom? Or you're a maiden servant? Tell a woman around you, know your price. Know your price. If you're not marrying a king, don't waste your time. You'll become maiden servants in kingdoms. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Don't waste time. Do not waste time. When you become a mother, the first day you get a boy and he starts to grow up you start describing the kind of woman you want mothers usually tell their sons who not to marry no, no, no. Don't waste time telling your children who not to marry. Uh -uh. Take time telling them who to marry. Because as you continue telling them who to marry, you're wiring her. Let me tell you how it appears. When a woman is instructing her son, and then he tells her son, her candle shall not burn out in the night. To the woman inside, she's receiving a solemn instruction. Your candle shall not burn out in the night. If you have understood it, say amen. For us, we used to tell people, the people not to marry. Don't marry a woman who is quarrelsome. Don't marry a woman who gossips. Don't marry a woman who slumbers. Don't marry a woman who doesn't work. Don't marry a woman who doesn't know how to cook. And I warn you, don't... No, 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 no. If you made a mistake, correct it on your children. Get your kasan and start telling him. The woman will be instructed. And then you ask me, what if I have a daughter? Very simple. The moment she introduces to you a man, read in Proverbs 31. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Did you understand what I just said? The moment your girl comes, Mommy, this is the man I feel the Lord. You tell him, oh, can I have a moment with him, darling? Then you leave the bedroom. Then she starts reading. That is how things work. No, 
Can I give you an example? If I get each of those things and put them in context, each of those verses, I can teach an hour on each. An hour on each. For example, if I start speaking about her candle not burning out in the night, the ability of a woman to see in darkness in the most obscure places and ambiguous experiences. My, as a man, when I, I stop seeing, my wife starts to see. That is why you tell your son in law Proverbs 31. No, because in the process you're telling them the day you stop seeing ask your wife when you're not sure about a situation ask your wife she knows the day you're stuck in a business deal don't waste time ask your wife hallelujah if he's a man of wisdom, he'll pick it. Somebody shout hallelujah. No, let me give you an example. Can I read only one before I finish? Only one. 26. Verse 26. The Bible says, She opened her mouth with wisdom. Let's first talk about that. Let's first talk about that. She opens her mouth with wisdom. That's why I love the way the ministry of grace comes through. It does not seek to tell them what to do. It seeks to confirm what is already affirmed in them as truth. To tell her that a virtuous woman is this. Because grace assumes you are. <laughs> Those are things that Pastor Meb has understood. <laughs> now, listen. There are five things. That's why I said if I went, each, let me just give you 26 only. There are five things. I'm having to return that describe a woman whose mouth is full of wisdom. Five. Five things. Number one. The Hebrew word there for wisdom is chokma. And chokma also describes five things. Number one. The wisdom for you to act in skill when war enters your house. Your I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. The first definition of a woman of wife, according to the Hebrew word Choma. Right? Choma. Number one. She opens her mouth with wisdom. Number one. You must have skill. When war enters your household, war can come through your husband, war can come through your in laws, war can come through your, your, your children. But how you answer with your mouth is important. That's the wisdom. That's the wisdom. That is the wisdom. That is the wisdom. Some women are okay when everything is okay. When war comes into their house, they speak without wisdom. They speak without wisdom. Even when war comes into your household, no, know how to speak the right word. Are you hearing me? I'll give an example. Your husband is abusive. You know how to speak to him. You know just know how to. If you are beating me, if I beat you, you you 
Do you understand what I'm saying? When you're in a corner and a man says, I'm going to beat you, what do you say? What do you say? Beat me, beat me and see. Hey, my brother, no. Kill you. Kill in war. What does the Bible say? Bible about good words. What are good what do the good words do? What do they do? What does the Bible teach about good words? They turn away the, the heart of wrath. That's what good words are. They'll you know, beat you, tell me the most handsome man I've ever seen. They'll beat you, the most anointed singer. I know you can't beat me. My God, you are deep, you are wise, you are intelligent. How can you? <laughs> A soft answer cannot away wrath. But grievous words stir up anger. Some of you in the middle of the fight, you also think, oh, oh you're stupid, even you are stupid. You're hopeless, even you are hopeless. You are even you are stupid. Soft answers. You're awesome. When I'm tired of you, you're a good man. I believe in you. are the best thing I ever happened to me. You're a good man. 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 You're <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah! Hallelujah! The next thing. Wisdom in administration. Every woman must speak as an administrator in a household. Not as a house girl. And every man must respect her office. As the administrator of that house. A woman of wisdom answers as an administrator. Not as a slave. Not as a house girl. But as an administrator. That is why when a, woman, when a house is, is torn down. The Bible says the words of a, of a woman tear down a household. Her own self. And it comes through such words. Have a mind that knows how to run the things in your household. The next thing, shrewdness. You must answer shrewdly. Praise the Lord Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. John, hallelujah. Next is wisdom, prudence in religious affairs. You must have a place in prudence when it comes to the religious affairs of your household. To speak like a woman who knows God. And the last is ethical. Basic ethics. You must speak in wisdom with no. basic, the wisdom of basic ethics. No. I don't know that you understand that. Many people in our generation don't. But some of us, when we look through the how our let me tell you. Some of you, if your your mother has 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 been married up to an old age, you understand what I mean. 
ba mo muri ma wa ina honyo ko agumero mu kaye ku marobwire buringo ya kuro mu kaye no itegereze chinduga they don't stay in houses because their men are so good if you can look at the things your mother went through keep your father you'd be convinced there was no woman who could marry that man do you understand what I'm saying? Help us suitable. Praise the Lord Jesus. So the Bible says her mouth must answer with wisdom and her tongue is the law of kindness. The word there for law is Traction. It is the Torah of kindness. In other words, it is structing kindness. It is structing kindness. Even when she's instructing her children what to do and what not to do, she instructs in kindness. Even when she's instructing her maid what to do and what to do, that woman must instruct in kindness. You enter a home. I've seen those things. A woman is talking to a mate. You are stupid. You don't even do this and that. You are so stupid. You are so stupid. Then you come in. A boss. A boss. Thank you. You know this mate was annoying me. And I'm like, oh, oh. Thank you. And then I sit down and I'm like, oh, oh. The husband is in trouble. If you can abuse a maid, you can abuse your children. And if you can abuse your children, you can abuse your husband. And if you can abuse your husband, you can abuse your mother. <laughs> One time a young man came and uh, he was he wanted to marry a certain young girl. And one time I witnessed this girl quarreling with her mother. But she's humble to the man. Submission. I heard this woman answer her mother. And I told the young man, if I be a man of God, you're not going to marry that woman. You can't. You can pray and speak in tongues and call heaven down. You can't. The way she speaks to her mother, who are you? He will assure you. Let me tell you. Thank more God. so when she has had children too. You know, <laughs> you have seen girls, the moment they give birth once, they start laughing their mothers. Mommy, how are you? Because they know the pain of the baby. But if you, if you find a woman who has had children and still abuses her mother, man of God free. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Flee in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know how many things are happening in relationships because women can't even answer in wisdom? Nobody can ever teach you the full script of being a wife. It only comes through understanding that you're a new creature. And because the word of God is inside you. It is begotten inside you. That's the only guarantee. That is why Lemuel's mother concludes and says, Charm is deceitful. In the next verse, is charm is, and beauty is deceitful. But a woman that feareth the Lord. The woman that feareth. 
the Lord. Because if she fears God, it is the beginning of wisdom. And wisdom is the principal thing. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is why I don't understand how you marry a man who is not born again. Oh, but he's good, <laughs> however good he is. I don't understand how you marry a woman who is not born again. However good she is. Because she doesn't have a covenant with your God. Of course there are exceptions of some of you who married before you understood the truth and then you already need. The Bible says the Lord forgive you on that. But it's painful that a woman attended this conference and she marries a guy who doesn't know God. It is painful. What did he bewitch you with? What does he have that God couldn't give you? Do you understand what I'm saying? And so if you're here and there's a guy who is trailing you and he doesn't speak in tongues and is born again. Tonight get that phone. Close your eyes. Type a hard one. Tell him you're not of my kind. Sorry. Sorry. Send. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You excel them all. You excel them all. You excel them all. You excel them all. Let me tell you one last thing. A woman who is born of God understands the power of the finished work according to the preordained word of God. So, when you're reading Proverbs, remove she. Put, I do this. I do this. I do this. I excel them. I consider a field. And I buy it. I make my clothes. With linen and tapestry. I do this. I wake up in the morning. Let me talk about that. Career women. You know, I'm a, I'm a banker, you know. I'm a very busy person, you know. I'm a banker, you know. Banker, you know. I'm a banker, you know. So, you know, even you, you see, I am busy. You know, now, you, how, where, where can I get time to make breakfast? I work for the whole day, morning to 6 p.m. And then I come back, you know, sometimes I come back 9 or late. Even we have fellowship. Of course, that's why we get a mate. And some even have seven mates. The one for clothes, the one for children, the one for the dogs, the one for the shoes, the one for the TV, the one for the radio, and the one who is just there to escort you. She rises while it's still early in the night and gives meat to her household and a portion to her maiden. I don't care whether you have a cook, I don't care whether you have the best chef in the world. Sometimes in the morning, you have to create the best meal and tell your maid, I'm still the woman of the home. That is not only a reminder to the maid, it is also a reminder to any other woman. You have to get the point. Where if they ask you, do you trust your husband? You, 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 you say, I trust you. Then you ask him, then he ask you why. You tell them because I know who I am. That's a woman who has understood God. Why, why do you say your husband can't cheat on you? You tell them simple. I know who I am. Somebody shout hallelujah! You can't 
sit on a woman of virtue. You can't. Even if, you, even if you have a demon spirit in your family, even if you have a grandfather's demon, which makes you move from women to women, she can mix you up until like the, the end of, of Proverbs is the last verse of Proverbs. The, that's that one. The last verse of Proverbs. You realize the mother is telling him, give her the fruit of her hands. No, give me the message version. The message version. The message version says, give her everything she deserves. Because you will. You give her everything. That your man will give you everything. You deserve. Bye. And the next line says. And the next line says. Of 31. It's over. Huh? Message stops there. Mine goes a bit further. The version I have. <laughs> the version I have goes a bit further. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I'll give you one testimony. Is that one woman came to me and told me. All men cheat. And I told her. You are right. Then she asks me. So why do they do it? And I told her because you say they do. Thank you, the message has finished it. Give her everything she deserves. Festoon her life with praise. Fill her life with praise. But back to the point. She asked me, why do they cheat? I told her, because you said they cheat. So is it because I've said therefore they do? Now they doing it before I said it. And I told her. The ones who cheat me, I don't know them. You know, it every man must remove that nonsense out of your head. Women, remove that nonsense out of your head. Not all men cheat. Remove that nonsense out of your head. Remove it. Rub it out of your head. You know when you sit in a congregation of people, say, ha, all men are cheating. You just stand up and say, Abamu. 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 Proverbs says, as a man thinks, so is he. No, it doesn't say so does he become. You don't become what you think. You are what you think. By the time you assume that men cheat, you're already wiring your man. You, you, but you no, know, as you think, so he thinks. Oh, you know, the moment a woman says, all men I don't trust my husband. I think it's simple. It's simple. You have already opened for him a, a great and effectual door. That is why the scriptures are clear. Every woman must cover her husband. That's why the Bible says you shall do him good all the days of your life. Even when you say text message on the phone. No message. Look away and say, excel them all. You were there to You didn't get what I just said. Watching. The Hebrew word for excellence means you're preferred. Imagine a woman who goes to a man. Then she says, I was in the bedroom and I found your phone. Some of you, you become carnal. Who is Sakwanda? No, who is Sakwanda? Who is Sakwanda? Sakwanda, no. Don't be carnal. 
Publicano. Read a message. Look at it. And say, yeah, there's some lower class girl trying to communicate to you. I excel her. Take your time. Immediately bring supper and put it on the table. I tell him, darling, do you want some? Kachumbari, what do you need? You want this? Let me make it. You've just showed him a text message and you know Sakwanda is there. Sit down and say, uh-huh. Can we say a mystery? I am sorry. Ah, no, 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 it's okay. Don't worry, I know who I am. Tell somebody I know who I am! I know who I am. You know who you are. It's a women's conference, you know who you are. I don't know why men are standing. You know who you are! I have a life story. A life, a true life story. Of someone I know very well. Whose husband one time came back at 5 a.m. And he was with another woman. And this was a woman who knew the word. She knew the word. The moment he came back. Oh, how are you welcome? Let me make it tea. Let me make it tea. Let me make she made him tea. She made him tea. She made him food. I'm not going to eat, no darling. I sat all the way waiting for you. True story. So one time she sat down. I was with her in a, in a place. And I told her, where do you get this strength? She told me, Apostle. She shook her head like this, Apostle. He's mine. You don't get it. That is skillful warfare. He. Is mine. Those are wasting time. The white Wafumba Kuvayo. They Wafumba Kuvira Kagari. No. We don't flee from the devil. We resist and flee. That's how you keep your house. In Jesus' name. Somebody raise your hands and speak to Jesus. Just speak to God. I want to finish this. So let the ruins come to life. And the beauty of your name. Rise up from your shed. God forever you reign. And my soul will find rest. In the shadow of your will. I will love you forever and forever. So let the ruins come alive. Let them come to life. Oh, me, rising up from me, yourself. God forever.
Something is going to happen in about a minute from now. And I want you to note. Be careful with the people who are standing on the edges. I want you to give a little distance from the Something is going to happen in a minute from now. Put up your hands and I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost is going to do. If you're a woman in this house, I want you to put up your hands right now. I felt an instruction of the Holy Spirit to release an impartation from the apostolic office. There are women here. The seed in you is so great that the responsibility of your life goes beyond the borders of nations. The baby you're carrying in your spirit eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. There are words I want to explain. But I'm sure I don't have the language but the person I'm talking to in this room has The person I'm talking to understands them. The kingdom that the Lord is building through you. The nations that the Lord is starting through you. Are you ready? Are you ready? In the name of Jesus. May you prophesy to nation. There are prophetesses here. Receive it in the name of Jesus. 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 I need to lay hands on a few of you. I shall come. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. May God use you as a woman of season, as a woman of purpose. May your destiny change. May tonight, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, come on, go. I hear a, a, a word by the Holy Spirit. How many of you have heard of Catherine Kuhlman? She was the Lord's evangelist. With the healing anointing on her life. There are women here. What is upon you? What is stuck in your life? Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. May God heal the sick. May God cleanse the lepers. May he do miracle signs and wonders through your hands. May the lamb walk, may the blind see. May the deaf hear in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive it. 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 Receive it.
May God use you. 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 As the widow in this generation. May God raise you in your different areas of influence. May you flow in the Holy Ghost. Like you've never done before. In the name of Jesus. They're living now. Listen. If you're a woman and you came in with fibroids, I want you to check yourself. I feel fibroids are disappearing now. Now! Now! Check yourself. Listen. Barrenness. Barrenness. That spirit of barrenness. You know. Listen to me, somebody. Some people. Some people. Think you must first try to get pregnant. To know there is a barren spirit on you. The person I'm talking about has not been impregnated yet and is not married. But you have a barren spirit on you. God delivers you now in the name of Jesus. 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 There are eight ladies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, you will know if you are a man. By some results that are going to begin with it from this evening. The Lord opens your ears. He opens your ears in the spirit. And eyes to see. Like you've never had and seen. If you're sick of any sickness, the Lord heals you. The Lord heals you. Praise God. Listen. There are women who are used by demon spirits. At night, these things come and use them. You know, as you speak, the Lord confirms His word. Some of the women I know, they are the ones who have been struggling even in relationships. Because in the spirit, you're not alone. In the spirit, you're not alone. Some of you they are not even proposing to you. Because in the spirit you are not single. Some of you even a guy just left without saying anything. Because you are not single. He felt like either you were cheating on him with another. Or he felt like he was not, you were three. Right now in the name of Jesus. Wherever that spirit is. I command it out of your life. In the name of Jesus. Whatever thing that has been married to you. Tonight in the name of Jesus. I separate it from you. That demon spirit. That has been using you in the night. God delivers you. Now. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of
I cannot close this meeting. Think I was attending a meeting age without giving somebody the opportunity to receive Jesus. As their personal Lord. Come I've walked with that man since I was eight. I saw him when I was eight. On a crusade ground in Kawempe. And I've walked with him since then. I know him. Like he knows me. It's the greatest gift. The greatest choice. The greatest you can ever make. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Listen. I've just received the word of knowledge. From God. the word of knowledge from God. Now I'm going to The world has given too much power to the devil. The world has given the The world has given too much power to the devil. You understand what I'm saying? That it's almost as though the church is powerless. And the devil is powerful. Now I'm speaking for the sake of Western Uganda. I'm no longer speaking as Vega Grace. The anointing that is breaking out in the West. The things that are going to happen in your life. Some of you men are going to call you false. You know why? No It's going to be too much. The anointing working on your life is going to be too much. But here is a word of wisdom. You know who you believe. You know who called you. When nobody was there. It's him before you stand. It is him before you stand. And it is him you will account. May God give you boldness in the time when too much is happening in your life. May God give you boldness. May God give you boldness. Three years ago, I had a vision. Jesus carried four men. I was among those four. There was another man I know in Uganda. There are two I couldn't identify. There were four. There was one I know. And that guy, the Lord has raised him greatly. He's among the people the Lord is using strongly in this nation. There were four men. I was among those four. There was one guy I identified. And that one the Lord showed me just to, to see what will happen in his life. And, and, and I've seen the Lord using might. I have not mentioned his name. The other two I didn't see. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord tell me that I'm the Spirit of the Lord told me that I, we were there. 
Jesus had a big, a big, a big. It was a big, a big glass. Yes, I can imagine. Shaped like glass. It's like, a glass. Yeah, but with with a with a small base like that of white. Konka, it can be in a kokshitansa mukezesa white. And um, I saw him pouring an oil. And I heard the Spirit say, Drink and be filled. And the four of us there were filled and soaked. In the heavens, He told us, Look below. The oil was too much. And it kept on descending. And it came on the earth. And I saw two kinds of stars. I saw stars that were shining so bright. And I saw stars that were shining so little. When the oil came, the bright stars, some stayed. But a big number of bright stars ran away from the oil. When the oil fell on every lost little star, it shines so bright. And I heard him tell me, some have arrived. Some are satisfied. Some are not hungry. And I wanted to eat on them, but they had enough. I could have done more in them, but they had enough. Their souls were satisfied. And then I saw these light stars. And God tell me these ones are too, too, too hungry. And they were the majority. And he told me I'm going to raise people who have not been known. Who have not been known. But there were also big stars that stayed. And there were few. And I asked the Lord, How come this one stayed? And he said, I used them mighty. And they still believe. They still believe. Praise God. These are not things I'm supposed to deliver in a women's conference. But I saw them running out of time. Jesus is going to come back very soon. Yes, so Christo Nagarka Shuba. Very, very soon. Yes, Nagarka Shuba. Praise God. Come and see me. May he use you. Come Before he returns. Now listen. If you want to give your life to Christ. Please come here. And receive Jesus. Come and receive Jesus. As your personal Lord and Savior. There's a woman with black and white stripes. You have even looked behind. Come. Run quickly. Can somebody come and receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior? Or you're all born again. If you're not come and stand here. Come and What's your name? Angela. I need somebody to come and 
I want you to listen to me very carefully. God speaks to you many times. And you refuse to speak. Um, you are you love God. Sometimes you're in and out. You get disappointed. Very easy. And sometimes you don't even want to pray. But I want to tell you. There are people who can play with that and be okay. But you, you can't. Because you've been given too much. understand what I'm Stop playing. When you're in issues, you promise him many things. But you don't fulfill them. And he has been convicting you for some time. And many times you commit and say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to separate myself, I'm going to, you don't do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Stop playing with God. He's serious. He's taking serious. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you because tonight, I like changes. You change the course of her life. You change her destiny. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Now, everybody is born again. Come. 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 To repeat these words after me. And I'm going to pray for you. Say Jesus. Tonight. I receive you. As my Lord. And Savior. I receive you. As one who died. And rose again. You are the Lord of my life. I am separated from Satan. I enter a new lineage and a new life. I thank you, Lord, because you have received me as a new creation. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose 4 from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.